Hello, this is Lisi Black, heart healer, preacher of all things soul sharing, that as we really reveal the truth of who we are, we do attract our ideal clients. And I'm so thrilled to have Amber Rochelle Hargett here. She is an intuitive coach for sensitive women, and we want to talk about why you don't want thicker skin. Thank you so much for being here, Amber. <laughs> Absolutely thrilled to be doing this with you. Thank you for having me. I just love your beautiful um, heart share when you were really talking to me about how you wanted to deepen into your thin skin, that that was really the way forward. Can you tell me a little bit about your background, really learning to accept this beautiful, highly sensitive nature that you have? Of course. Yeah. So, you know, when I was a child, when I was growing up, I think like so many people uh, that are sensitive, particularly women, men as well, but we get these messages from the society around us or our friends and our family who maybe don't understand our sensitivity, that we're too sensitive or too emotional. We're just in general too much. And to a child that can be so incredibly damaging because we take that to heart. We don't recognize that it's just because we're misunderstood. We take that as like a real criticism that somehow our senses of what we're feeling are incorrect, that our feelings are invalid. And what happened for me, I think that, you know, happens to so many is that I started to believe that at such a deep level that I began to completely distrust my own feelings, my own sense of the world. And also like so many of us sensitives, I was a total people pleaser. So very outward focused. How can I make everybody around me comfortable? How can I make them happy? How can I make them pleased with me and proud of me? I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, right? Just very, um, very focused on how I was affecting the people around me and what was going on with them and very unfocused on my own heart. And as I grew up in that sort of a way, I was so disconnected from myself. I really didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I only knew what I thought I should be doing and what people around me wanted and wanted for me. Um, and, I just and see my soul being crushed right now. Hey, like it's so soul crushing beautiful. Yeah. So stifling and and such a hard way to go through life where your only comfort comes from really pleasing somebody else. And and at its heart, wanting to please people is a beautiful thing, right? There's nothing wrong with that inherently. It's just when that becomes your sole focus and you get stepped on in the process. Mm -hmm. And and you know, it's so damaging because when we invalidate our own feelings and we don't let ourselves believe our own sense of what we're experiencing around us, then that stuff can pushed down. And, you know, for me, that manifested in anxiety, a severe depression, and ultimately a really serious eating disorder, which was sort of my way, I think, in hindsight of feeling like I had control over something, feeling like I could succeed at something. And, you know, you and I have spoken about eating disorders before. um, And it's so hard. And I started you know, really struggling with one when I graduated from college. And, you know, like I had told you, it was, I had always had this set of rules to follow. You know, school is very, for me, it was very easy to succeed in school. I was always a straight A student. I knew what I needed to do to be liked and to get accolades and I could do it. And so when I, (laughs) when I graduated, here I was, no more system in place to tell me what to do. I had no idea who I was, didn't really know what I wanted, and I sort of fell apart. You know, I was grasping at straws for something that would help me, uh, you know, feel proud of myself, feel like I was succeeding at something. And that's when the, the anorexia started for me um, and the over-exercising and the restricting my food, mm-hmm. which also eventually led into bulimia because I was struggling so hard and I would go for days without eating and then I would binge and purge and it was a very negative cycle you know and and part of it for me was that I had tried and this goes back to this thicker skin point um I had tried for so long to pretend that I was something that I wasn't yes to pretend that I could toughen up like everybody else because I believed that that was important that I was supposed to toughen up I believed that I needed to have that thicker skin <laughs> I'm giving you right now. Hello, everyone who's ever believed that. <laughs> it makes me want to just like scoop up my younger self. And yeah, because it's yeah. so heartbreaking. Mm. And, and I thought that there was something deeply inherently wrong with me, something, uh, this, this flaw that I was trying to make up for constantly. And so, it, you know, eventually as, as my eating just sort of progressed and I got really, really sick and, and to the point where then I was so malnourished that I wasn't thinking clearly. And it's a very dangerous, dangerous, slippery slope. Um, 
And it wasn't until one of my best girlfriends sort of freaked out on me in, in a clothing store <laughs> um, because nobody, and this is the other scary thing, nobody had really said anything. In fact, I was getting a lot of compliments. Like, yeah. my God, you've lost so, what, so much weight. What are you doing? What's your diet like? What's your, you know, and, and that encourages it. Um, and so I felt like, oh, I'm doing something good. People like me. I'm, I'm succeeding at something yeah. and, and didn't realize how, how detrimental it was. But she sort of showed me all of a sudden, hey, I wasn't just hurting myself, I was hurting the people around me. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was the defining moment where I was like, I need to get help, you know? And I did not at that point in time love myself enough to do it for me, yeah. but I loved her enough to do it for her. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to do it for others first and let them believe for us that we're worthy, right? And but it was through, you know, it was through the, going through the recovery process of healing from my eating disorder that I really had to rebuild my relationship with myself. I really had to understand that a relationship with yourself is just as important as a relationship with anybody else. Well, and that would work because that's the foundation for any other relationship is how we're relating and talking and feeling about ourselves then becomes a foundation for anyone else we're relating to. Hey. Exactly, exactly. You know, and also it's like if your cup is not full, if you are, and this is the problem with people pleasing, is when you're so outward focused and you're not letting your own needs get met or your own voice be heard or letting yourself be yourself, right? Yeah. That is, I mean, it can lead to so many problems and we end up resentful and overwhelmed and depleted. And then what good are you going to be for anybody, anyways, right? Okay. And so, Going through this pro this healing process and learning how to, for me, I think the most profound things were connecting with myself, letting myself trust my feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Letting myself be like, even though somebody else might tell me that this is too big of a feeling or I'm yes. overreacting or this is my feeling and it's valid. And, and I our feelings, back, like, you know, when you were talking about how we really are educated that our feelings are invalid that that is what they are subliminally telling us. And they don't mean to, it's unintentional. Like you said, they just don't understand us. But for you to have your own feelings invalidated, you then had to turn the tides on that and actually learn how to make your feelings valid. They are real. They are mine. They are right. They are in place. Oh, hell no, back up. Back up the truck. <laughs> this is good. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yes, exactly. And to be able to, you know, stand up for yourself and stand up for your feelings and be like, you may not understand how I feel, yeah. but you don't have to. It's how I feel. Yeah. And that's okay. Beautiful. You know, and to give our feelings space to breathe, because when we do that, mm -hmm. that's when they can dissipate. They just want to be heard and seen. Mm -hmm. They're there for a reason. You know, we live, I think, particularly in America, we have this whole thing about we're supposed to be happy all the time. And that's just not how human beings are supposed to be. Happiness is wonderful, of course, but we are given a rainbow of emotions for a reason, right? They're guideposts. They're here to teach us things. And when we push them down and push them aside, we're telling ourselves that we don't matter, that our perception of things isn't, isn't true and doesn't matter. Yeah. And, you know, when we tell ourselves that we need to toughen up and have this thicker skin, like I... I was the, I wanted that so badly for years. I was like, and it was so funny because I tried so hard, but it was never going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> we just look bad trying to look like we got thick skin. It becomes more apparent we got thin skin because we cannot pull it off, hey? Exactly. And also the ironic part and, and a good thing to know is that the more you fight it, the more it's going to uh, flare up for you, but flare up for you in the way that you don't want it to. You know, uh, things that people complain about, right? Like being very reactive, crying in public, like oh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but a lot of people struggle with that. When you allow yourself to be like, you know what, I am very sensitive. I am very emotional. I have a thin skin. And instead of hating that mm -hmm. and fighting that, I'm going to learn about it and I'm going to try and understand it mm -hmm. and I'm going to validate it and I'm going to do everything I can to learn how to work with it. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you start to notice all the beautiful things about it and how amazing it is and how, you know, it can help you to really like change the world. And, and I know we were talking about earlier about when you're standing in your truth and being yourself and who you are is giving other people permission to do the same. And so for a sensitive soul to stand up and be like, you know what, I'm not going to apologize for my feelings anymore. This is who I am. Then you are inspiring other sensitive souls to be like, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Can I have some of that? I love my thin skin. I just I really, really admire how much 
you have stepped into the power of your thin skin that for other people that are watching you right now, you don't seem like you have thin skin, I would say, but your feelings are so close to the surface, it's evidence that you are. But we often associate having thin skin with sensitivity and volatility and isolation and abandonment. And this is the reflection of our wounding, that the reality is, is that you are the embodiment of someone who has deeply accepted their highly sensitive nature. And there is power, there is presence within you. And I just really wanted to show that with people. And I'm so happy that it's so evident. It's so clear, you know, just to be able to see you playing in it because you have this amazing five day free course. Tell us a little bit about all the feels because I too, totally believe that when we try to push our feelings down, we actually encourage them to build a force that will actually spew forth. And we've all had moments like that. So your philosophy is really to acknowledge, to accept, to allow and let them pass through us. What would they be getting in this five day free course through you, Amber? Yeah, so I, I created this because I really believe the first step, you know, in, in coming to terms with your sensitivity and starting to love it is knowing how to deal with emotional overwhelm because that can be, it, it shuts us down so much if we don't have tools in place um, to know how to cope with our bigger emotions. And so I created this course as really kind of like a jump start to get you to reconnect with your feelings, um, not be so afraid of them, understand that they can be manageable and, you know, start to learn how to validate your own feelings and then give you some really practical tools, practical and spiritual tools for how, you know, what to do when you're going through life and you're picking up other people's feelings and you don't know which ones are yours or not. Mm -hmm. And then yours feel so big. And how do we get up and go through our day to day mm -hmm. and be productive and get things done when we have all of this emotional turmoil going on? So, it, I, you know, I talk a lot about self-care and, and I give you some really beautiful tools that are going to help you to make friends with your emotions and not be so afraid of them. <laughs> and so you get, um, it's a five day course, totally free. So once a day, you'll get a video from me, a short little video, they're about five minutes, so it's very manageable, um, and a workbook, and I have a beautiful meditation that I recorded for you, and it's just a great way to, you know, get yourself, start to shift your mindset on your feelings, and really start to come back to yourself and heal that relationship with yourself. <sighs> I just adore being in your company, because our expertise has literally been birthed through our eating disorders. Yes. It's kind of like we didn't flag the issues that we were actually dealing with as children and in young women until it manifested in an eating disorder. And I guess it's just really nice, hopefully for other people to be able to hear that that is not the problem. That is the, the symptom and the manifestation. But for me, knowing that you've passed through that just gives me so much more appreciation for what you're offering to people because of what you had to go through to learn this that without my experience of underfeeding and overfeeding, I wouldn't have actually learned how to make my feelings valid because my eating disorder was a reflection of ignoring my feelings. And I love how, how clearly and, and, and open-heartedly you've been able to speak about that because this is social faux pas. We don't talk about eating disorders and we don't talk more importantly about what's actually underneath them. But our relationship with ourselves is actually at the heart of what's going on here. So I love that you're helping people to embrace their feelings and learn how to shift their mindset on how they perceive them and give them tools to really allow them to open and flow. So thank you so much for sharing your soul and your beautiful heart with us today, Amber. Oh, of course. Thank you so much. It's, I just, I adore you. And this has been so fun. <laughs> So um, if you would like to follow uh, Amber, I have her social media links beneath. Please check her out. Everything she releases is gold. I absolutely adore it. And you can access the link to be able to get her free five-day All the Feels calls below. If you are an emerging leader and healer that really wants to learn the art of sharing your soul to attract your ideal clients, grab my soul sharing guide beneath and check out my social media if you want to come and play. Yay, Amber. Shimmy hands. Shimmy hands. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Beautiful. I'm so appreciative of your time. Of course. <laughs>